and welcome to the online lectures for software engineering in today's class we'll be discussing the topic testing strategies the topics that we'll be covering today are these beginning with a strategic approach to testing now there are different characteristics of strategic testing now testing what is testing actually testing is basically a set of activities that you're going to plan in advance so that you're going to conduct them in a systematic fashion so system is a, a set of activities that you're going to plan and then you're going to conduct them in a systematic way now to perform effective testing you need to like a team a software team should conduct different technical reviews now the main aim of conducting technical reviews is that you get to know what type of testing needs to be as you're going to make a plan you can make an effective plan of testing if you conduct different technical reviews with the different teammates that are conduct that are developing the software now testing is going to begin at the component level that means you're not going to conduct if this is the software that you're developing that has got some six seven components in them so you're going to come test one component at a time you're going to test one at a time then you're going to leave that test component two then test component three you, this is going to go on till seven so you're going to test each and every component individually and then you're going to test the entire system now testing is conducted by the developer of the software and by an independent test group that are there are two people that are going to conduct the test the developer that is the one that has designed your software and another independent test group now here we'll be studying two different types of testing you're going to study alpha testing and beta testing two types of the testing that are done one is done by the developer and one is done by the customer then test now uh, there are different types of testing and here different testing techniques are used at different points of time it is not the case that if one test case is there that will be applied to all the functions you're going to use different techniques for different instances now this testing and debugging are different activities two different activity testing is you're going to see whether the particular software is giving the correct output that was desired and debugging is basically removing the different errors the next is verification and validation the most important short answer question difference between verification and validation now what is verification verification is going to mean are all algorithms coded correctly that is verification whereas validation is does whatever software you're making does it meet the user requirement that is what you have developed that is the same that the customer has requested in the first place so coming to the definition verification a set of activities that ensure the software is correctly the software correctly implements a specific functional algorithm whereas validation is set of activities that ensure that software has been built is traceable to customer requirement that is what was stated by the end user that is what you're developing it should not be a completely different thing the next is a strategy for testing conventional software now there is a diagram that represents the conventional software strategies you going to begin ab abstract to concrete and then narrow to a broader scope the different testing are you got system testing validation testing integration testing unit testing code testing so you're going this is your all types of testing this is your core when you was uh, when you first the first phase begins at the system engineering then getting all the requirements then making the code now when you've designed the entire code you go to the testing part on the fifth so four types of testing now this testing is going to begin unit testing unit testing is testing each and every component 
individually. As I've told, you're not going to uh, test the entire system as a whole. You're going to test each and every component separately. Then integration testing is that when you've uh, tested all the components separately, you're going to check whether this components, when they are deployed, whether they were working properly or not. That is your integration testing. Then comes your validation testing. Now this validation, the, the previous slide that we discussed, verification validation. Validation is going to ensure that project is going to meet the customer need. Then you've got system testing. System testing means testing the entire system as a whole. So this is how you're going from a narrow to a broader scope, beginning from a small things and then completely testing the entire software. So these are different strategies for the conventional softwares. So there's in detail about each and every testing. Now unit testing concentrates on each component function of the software as implemented within the source code. So this, now this is going to ensure the entire complete coverage of entire error detection. Error detection is done, maximum error detection you're going to find out. And then when you've done unit testing, you're going to go with the different components are going to be assembled. Then the next is integration testing. Now integration testing is other two different components you've uh, tested. You're going to assemble all of these components. So this integration testing, it is going to focus upon the different inputs and outputs and how these different components fit together. When you're integrating different components, when you integrate first, second, third, three components in a system, how they are, whether they're working properly or not, whether they're giving you the desired output or not, or if any other errors are introduced that you're going to find out. Then within validation testing, you're going to check whether the system meets the end user's requirements. So here you're going to focus upon all the functions. You're going to focus upon the behavior of the system, the performance of the system. Each of the thing is focused here. Then in system testing, system testing is testing the entire system as an entire whole. All functions and performances achieved or not, here you're going to identify. So these are the steps for conventional software. Then the next is the drivers and stubs are used in unit testing. So what are drivers and stubs? A driver is like a main program that accepts test case data and passes the data to the component being tested and prints the return result. So here driver is a program. It is going to take all the data as input. So here your data is going to be your input and this data is going to be passed to the component that is being tested. So this is the component that is under test. And then when you're giving some input data, you are also going to record what is the output of that particular component. So this is the job of the driver. The next is stub. This serves to replace modules that are subordinate to or called by the component to be tested. So here you're taking the component that is being tested. Here you're going to focus. Here stub is going is the one that is component that is being called that as you're going to test it's the same thing. There was a component that you're testing. It is going to use the module's exact interface, may do minimal data manipulation, provide verification of entry, and returns the control to the module undergoing testing. So within this tab, what you're going to do is that you're going to take the entire exact interface. And you're going to, you might make any changes with the data that is the input that you're taking. Here, some changes can be done. If those changes are there, these changes are done based upon the user's requirement and then you're going to record the output now this you're using this drivers and stuff both must be written but they do not constitute any part of any installed software product this is used only for unit testing now this is so this is an example of a test scenario This is an example for your test scenario. Now the test scenario is login. You're going to check whether 
the login page that you have designed, whether it is working properly or not. The test cases, login negative test case, test priority is high. Any prerequisite or post requisites are there, that is that will be written. Now here, first launch the application. Here we are testing the Facebook application. Now when you want to test the application, first you're going to launch it, that you're going to open the application. The expected output should be Facebook homepage should appear. Then you're going to run the application and you're going to check whether you're getting the same output or not. Then the browser that you're using, that is written. Then if suppose the expected result is same as your actual output, then the system will be, then the test result will be passed. Then you're going, then test comments will be who is the person that have tested the particular component. Then as this is for checking the login details, you're going to enter invalid email and password and hit the login button. You're giving a wrong input here. Now, if you're giving the wrong output, wrong input, the email phone number that you have entered doesn't match any account and it is going to ask you whether you want to sign up for another account. So actual output is the similar to your expected output. So again, the result is going to be passed. Now when you're testing, you're all going to give a wrong password, wrong, you're going to give a wrong input and you're going to give a correct input and check. You're going to give two cases because you're going, you want to check what happens when this, when you give some wrong input, what happens when you're going to give correct input, whether the system is going to work efficiently or it is giving the same result or not that is identified. When you give the correct input, the password that you've entered, uh, here you're giving us enter valid email ID and incorrect password. So here you've entered the wrong email ID. Here you've entered the correct email ID, but wrong password. Now you've entered the correct password. So here you're, you're checking all types of scenarios. Then the next case will be, you're going, the third case will be, you'll be uh, entering a correct ID and correct password and you're going to check what is going to happen. So when your actual expected output and actual, uh, sorry, actual, expected output and actual output are same, then the result will be passed. So this is what is called as your test scenarios. Now these test scenarios are planned in advance. And the next is validation testing. Now in validation testing, there are two types of testing as I told, there's alpha testing and there is beta testing. So first, you've got alpha testing and you've got beta testing. In the first point in alpha and beta testing is that alpha testing, this is basically done at the developer's side. That is the developer is going to test the system. Whereas in beta testing, this testing, this is conducted at the other end user's side. That is in the real time environment, you're going to do this testing. Then the second one is, this software is used at a, a natural setting. That is, you're not going to make any changes here. You're just going to test the software. And as the developer is testing it here, the, dev the developer will be watching what you're doing. The software is tested at a natural setting. And here, the developer is present and he is watching. Whereas in beta testing, the developer is not present. Then the next one is, now as the developer is doing the testing, you do not have any real time environment. So this testing is done at a controlled environment. Any changes are there, the you've got team that is going to help you do that. Whereas at the beta testing, as you're 
testing the application at the end user site, this is going to serve as a live application. Now, when the when system is serve uh, is serving as a live application, the software, uh, the environment that this software is being run, this cannot be controlled. The environment can't be controlled because you do not know what error might occur, what type of data you're using. So this is the, the differences between alpha and beta testing. Now at the end of beta testing, the different errors that are present at the end user side, all those errors or problems, these problems will be recorded or they will be noted and they will be passed to the developer for making any changes or for providing service. So there's a difference between alpha and beta testing. In an important short answer. The next is system testing. Now within system testing, there are again different types of testing. You've got recovery testing, securities testing, stress testing, and performance testing. Now recovery testing is you're going to test for recovery from system faults. What you're going to do is when you've designed a system, what you're going to do, you might uh, intentionally pull the plug of the system and you're going to see uh, how the files are going to be saved, whether they're going to be auto saved or the, all the files, all the data that you were working on, whether they are going to be lost. So this you're going to intentionally make faults within the system, and you're going to check how the system recovers from a system failure. You're going to force the software to do uh, to make error. You're going to intentionally give some wrong input, and you're going to check. The next is security testing. Within security testing, you're going to verify all the protection mechanism that you put in place. Whether the system is safe or not, you're going to check within the security testing. All the different security patches that you have used, you're going to check whether they are up and working. Then the next is stress testing. As the name suggests, stress testing is you're going to load your system with a lot of input and you're going to see how the system is going to work under low under a lot of load or under stress. Then the next is performance testing. Within performance testing, you're going to check the performance of the system. You're going to test the runtime performance as then how much time you're going to get the results. You're going to check the performance. Now this performance testing, this is normally with, uh, seen with a combination of stress testing. That is, if suppose the load of the system is being increased, whether the performance is increasing or decreasing. The, so performance testing is all affected by the your stress test. That is, you're going to have different values under when the system is under load and when the load is being reduced. The next is the art of debugging. Now, this debugging process, this is basically going to begin after the execution of a test case. After the execution of a test case, the debugging becomes. Now, why this has become after the execution of test case? This is because when you execute a test case, you are going to get to know if there is any error or not. When you get to know there is an error or not, you're going to begin with the debugging process. Now, debugging is a consequence of a successful testing. That is when you've successfully done the testing, you, you then go to the debugging process. Now, the job of this debugging process is that the different symptoms of the system, the different errors, they are going to try and match it to the error. or they're going to try and match it with the cause. What is causing the particular error? And then you're going to go for error correction. Then why debugging is difficult? Now this debugging is difficult because sometimes the symptoms and the cause may be geographically remote. You might not have the symptom and 
causes they might be at different locations the systems may the system the symptoms may disappear when another error is corrected sometimes what happens when you execute a particular program the system might have some two errors might be there now when you fix one error the another error is also gone so this might be a case the symptoms may actually be caused by non error that is it is not actually error but it is due to some rounding of accuracy suppose you have given an, an integer value but you have used a floating point value so you are just rounding of the numbers that is also going to introduce the errors the symptoms may be caused by human error human error means you might just do some very small simple silly mistake now when you are debugging you going to focus upon the logic of the code but the normal error is it might be a spelling mistake or something that so these errors become are difficult to find then it can also be symptoms that can be caused due to some timing problem that is a program uh, is not being executed at a particular time it is not able to fetch some files that can be a timing problem now the another cause can be sometimes what happens is a number of programs are running on a single processor so that can again introduce error now the three questions that need to be asked before correcting any error is the cause of the bug reproduced in another part of the program that is whether a similar error can be occurring in another part of the program that will be identified whether a similar error can be there in another part of your program then what next bug might be introduced by the fix that i am about to make this means that the source code that you've done that you've coded it should be studied so that you're going to identify the logic the different data structures that are related so when you get to study the different logic of your program you're going to see making any changes within the program whether it is going to affect the other part of the program so you're going to study the logic and the data structures of the program then the next is what should we have done to prevent the bug in the first place now this is the first step towards your software quality that is how you're going to avoid the different errors that are going to now by correcting the process you're correcting the product also when a bug is being removed from a program it is it is also eliminated from other future programs when you focus upon this third point so these are the three questions that are asked for correcting the errors so this following this makes your debugging process easy and a way lot simple as the end of today's class